Before we get started, this video was actually a request from one of the wonderful Subscribestar Bros, and this band has really good taste, since this is one I've been meaning to do for a while now. You came down to this southern town last summer To show the folks a brand new way of life But all you've shown the folks around here is trouble You've only added misery to their strife. Your concern is not to help the people. And I'll say again, no, it's been often said. Your concern is just to bring discomfort, my friend. And your policy is just a little red. Now, ain't I right? Ain't you right? Ain't you right? It matters not to you how people suffer. And should they you consider that a gain You bring a lot of trouble to the town and then you leave That's part of your communistic game Death is a preferable alternative to communism That's right, Epic Fortnite gamers, we're doing Jinro the Wolf Brigade, the intense, adrenaline-pumping, alternate history anime film based on the manga by Mamoru Oshii, who also wrote the film, and Kamui Fujiwara. It's a sick-as-fuck story about... grief. PTSD. Losing your humanity. Violent murder. Okay, I'm dropping the bit. Yeah, despite how much Jinro has been memed as right-wing death squad the anime, the actual film itself is not at all what you might think. That's not to say there isn't any action, but let's not spoil things just yet. The big question for the moment is, what exactly is Jinro? Well, Jinro is a cult franchise in Japan based off an alternate history timeline where Germany won World War II and occupied Japan. Now, before you might think this is going to be a generic what if the world was run by Nazis story, Jinro actually manages to stand out from the crowd in this very oversaturated genre. And yeah, I'm going to refer to the franchise at large as Jinro, despite it actually being called Kerberos Panzerkopf. 
because Jinro just sounds cooler, and it's easier to say. I have allergy problems going on now, just give me a fucking, just give me a fucking break here, I'm trying. Now, if you know absolutely nothing about this franchise, you might actually be feeling some deja vu at some of the visuals on screen. That's because Jinro's world building and art design has been referenced countless times. It became the premier look for techno-Nazi stuff, even if the actual emphasis on a lot of the tropes you typically see in a mirror World War II story don't show up. Like getting it out of the way right out of the gate, you're never going to see a single Holocaust camp because it's just not a part of the story or the world, but I'll explain a bit more later. The reboot Wolfenstein trilogy has some obvious hints at Jinro, though probably the most blatant example is the Killzone franchise with the Hellghost. If you don't see Jinro here, you're stupid. There are also the mercenary hunter dudes from Manhunt that sort of look like Wolf Brigade, but now I'm just plagiarizing points from Grimbeard. After making it through this challenge alive, Cash is confronted by the Wolf Brigade. I'm... <laughs> I set myself up for that joke, um, and then I didn't even get it as I was saying it. Cerberus, the, jo the joke was that they look like the dudes from Wolf Brigade. <sighs> Fuck. Point is, this franchise, while not a mainstream thing that is constantly talked about, has a very loyal following that want to pay tribute to it, though it's mostly to the anime film instead of the manga. As it stands, Jinro as a series is made up of the manga, the anime film, a small series of live-action films in Japan, referred to as the Kerberos Saga, radio dramas, and a Korean adaptation named Elong the Wolf Brigade. Also, ass loads of merchandise. While this franchise might seem small, you'd actually be amazed at how far this series has sunk its claws. And if the name Mamoru Oshii sounds familiar, it's because he's the director of Yurisei Yatsura, the anime at least, and Ghost in the Shell. So this dude has a reputation. You've already got some pretty serious examples of this guy's qualities as a director. Now, I can't go through every single piece of general media, but I can give you a basic rundown of the synopsis to the setting and obviously talk about the most famous part of the franchise which is the anime film. I said before that Jinro is one of those Germany wins World War II stories, and that is correct, but it's actually a lot more complicated than just that. The timeline of Jinro works like this. Japan actually sided with the Allies during World War II. Not only that, but Germany successfully defeated the Soviets at Stalingrad, turning the tide in their favor, and allowing them to take over Asia, beginning what is referred to as the Weimar Establishment. However, Hitler was successfully assassinated by Klaus von Stauffenberg in Operation Valkyrie. So Germany won, but it's kind of a Pyrrhic victory. In fact, it's not made 100% clear if Germany really won, or if a ceasefire was declared instead. Though it is established that Germany got access to an atomic bomb and used it on Japan, meaning Hiroshima and Nagasaki was by the Axis instead of the Allies. The main story of Jinro takes place about 20 years after this, so in the 1960s, and actually begins with Germany leaving Japan, sort of mirroring the end of America's occupation after the war in real life. But Japan is left in absolute political chaos, causing various factions both inside of and out of the government to plot on how to rip control the country away from each other. The manga even goes so far as to adapt an actual coup attempt by the Japanese military, as by the Special Armed Garrison, which is sort of the main focus of the story, in 1966, instead of the real-life date, February 26, 1936. Don't worry, this isn't a factor in the movie, I just thought it was interesting. This is actually where we get into some interesting territory here. The manga is more of an anthology story that fleshes out more of the world and setting with each installment. Each one serves to explore different factors of Jinro's world and give hints to a larger picture going on. The manga is actually really good, and I highly recommend it. Now, the anime film is a different beast. Not in terms of quality, just altogether, it's different. It sort of merges all of the anthology's plot points together into a singular story. That sounds like it could be a complete mess, but actually works really well, since while they tease or address certain story elements that the manga fleshes out in full, it never distracts itself from the main plot to the movie. First time watchers to Jinro might be expecting a pulse-pounding, violent, edgy action movie with some kick-ass art direction to it. Well, Jinro does have these things, it's actually a lot more of a quiet and somber movie than you might think. Jinro the Wolf Brigade follows our protagonist Kazuke Fuze, a member of the elite militarized police unit Special Armed Garrison, a counter-terrorism unit that essentially acts like a, to put it bluntly, death squad 
targeting the anti-government rebels known as the Sect. Now, in the manga, they make it pretty clear that the Sect have some form of Soviet communist influences inside of it, so just getting it out of the way now, there isn't really a good guy in Jinro. Hell, there's outright a terrorist group in the manga directly based off the Japanese Red Army, probably one of the most infamous terror organizations in Japanese history due to their propensity for torture and murder. Mostly against their own members, funny enough. Watch United Red Army for a good rundown of their history. Very interesting stuff. In the manga, they're referred to as the Four Seasons League. The movie makes makes it a lot more subtle and mainly focuses on the allegorical nature of the story than the political. Jinro, instead of being an in-depth political thriller that explores various ideologies and how they come in conflict with each other, decides to focus more on exploring the character of Fuse and his emotional journey. As mentioned previously, the film is sort of an amalgamation of different story beats from the manga, mostly the first actual arc of the manga called Forsaken Dog, though it changes a lot of details to be its own thing. For instance, the guy in the manga is a completely different dude named Toru Inoue and he's played up as a lot more of a fuck-up that's having trouble adjusting to his job. Fuse, meanwhile, is... different. For those unaware, Jinro opens up on Fuse failing to kill a teenage girl referred to as a Little Red Riding Hood, who is actually the courier for the sect terror group. She detonates her explosive and causes massive damage to Tokyo, along with killing herself in the process. This causes the other factions in the Japanese government to view the Special Armed Garrison as more of a liability due to bad press from their violence, and because the Japanese people are already a powder keg due to political turmoil. Public security, Japan's answer to the FBI, CIA, especially want to crack down on Special Armed Garrison and wipe them from existence. And caught in the middle of the whole thing is Fuse, who is struggling from PTSD from the mission and dealing with remorse for letting the girl die. When he goes to visit her grave, Fuse runs into a girl claiming to be the terrorist's sister, named Kei Amamiya. They grow close as Kei's warm nature helps tear down the cold exterior Fuse put up for himself, helping him almost regain his humanity. But Kei herself is hiding some secrets from Fuse, and it all leads to a very brutal end. So really, Jinro as a movie is more more of a somber romantic drama than a high-energy action flick. Two people united by tragedy grow to love one another, but are stuck in a horrible world that is doing everything it can to tear them apart. You get a lot of scenes where Fuse and Kei spend time together, going on dates and just enjoying each other's company. This is a talky movie with a lot of build-up to the violence. That's not to say it's completely devoid of it, the intro is one of the coolest action scenes in anime for a reason. Just that, General wants to build up exactly why you should care about the action. It's not just because the techno-Nazi stuff looks cool, which it does. These dudes straight up use MG42s like they're fucking assault rifles. That shit is just sick as hell. Instead, you really care about the man under the armor, and why he's ripping apart dudes into Halo bullets. Fuse is a very sympathetic character, a man conditioned to kill and fight, struggling with putting his humanity aside so he can do his job properly. And his relationship with Kay is very nice to see develop. She's a kind, gentle soul who is helping a stoic and violent man let his guard down. When they spend time together, you're happy to see them happy. Now, now, is it the greatest romance in all of anime? Nah, it's not that far. But it works for the film, and you do care about the two of them as characters. Now, you can't talk about Jinro without mentioning the... constant references to Little Red Riding Hood. There are endless references to the fairy tale, and hints at the idea of Fuse being like a dog. Hell, he's part of the Kerberos unit, you know. Cerberus, and specifically, they're also nicknamed the Wolf Brigade, a unit within a unit that go after anyone that tries to shut the Special Armed Garrison down. The girl in the sewer was a Little Red Riding Hood, bomb carriers who are distinguished by their red jackets. There's even word-for-word -word quotes from the story, entire monologues in fact. It's not really trying to be subtle about the metaphors here. If you spell subtly like this. <laughs> Hell, the title of the goddamn movie, Jinro, is outright the Japanese pronunciation of werewolf. So the idea is that Little Red Riding Hood fell in love with the big bad wolf. Only this wolf has a really big gun. And sadly, you can guess how it all ends. It decides to use a very not fun interpretation of the fairy tale for the basis. Jinro is a very grim movie. It's not really ever bright or cheery. In fact, it's fucking miserable at points. 
but sometimes that's okay. You kind of just want to watch a grim film that makes you think. Plus, it helps that it can back up the depression with sheer badass. The action in general, while sparse, is fucking incredible. There's so much detail to the animation, everyone moves with so much fluid motion. It's like everyone was rotoscoped with how precise the characters can be at times. It helps the world feel alive, with living, breathing people inside of it, so when the bullets start flying, it's incredibly satisfying. The final shootout in particular is probably one of the best final battles in all of anime. I loved every fucking second, and still get hyped anytime I watch the movie. Jinro is a massive recommendation. Just be aware, you're not gonna be watching Sneak, Clave, Fuck Commies and Jannies the movie. You're in for a very mature, psychological exploration of trauma and loss. There's only really three or four action scenes in the whole movie. Everything else is more discussions of the political scheming, from public security, Kay and Fuse falling in love, and Fuse dealing with PTSD episodes and hallucinations. I want to remain vague on a lot of the story details as it is, due to the fact that some of the elements work best going in kinda blind, but I do want to talk about the Korean remake really quick, since it's sort of a strange beast. Now, Jinro has had Japanese live-action movies that try to stick closer to the source material, but Elang is a completely different thing altogether. Take that timeline I spent the beginning of the video talking about, and completely toss it out the window. Instead of being an alternate history where Germany occupies Japan after World War II, the idea is that in 2024, South Korea is caught between a territory dispute between China and Japan, leading to the entire region being militarized, along with the US and Russia getting involved. And so the South is forced to unify with North Korea just to keep themselves from being devoured by everyone else around them. The sudden unification leads to the rest of the world imposing harsh tariffs on Korea, leading to an economic depression. The unrest caused by the situation leads to the formation of sect, who overwhelm Korean police and thus the Special Armed Garrison is formed in retaliation, though they're just called the Special Unit in this. The Special Unit accidentally slaughter unarmed teenage girls in a failed raid, referred to as Bloody Friday. So the public ire causes the unit to don the iconic armor for anonymity's sake, and leads to the same political scheming you saw in the anime. Now remember when I said the actual anime was a very quiet, somber film that was more about the psychology of Fuse and his connection with Kay, that's not a fast-paced action movie? Yeah, Elang is the high-octane action movie you're thinking of. For clarity, the director of Elang was Kim Ji-woon, an experienced director in Korea with a lot of successful movies under his belt. My two personal favorites out of his lineup are The Good, The Bad, and The Weird, a clear love letter to spaghetti westerns, and almost a complete remake of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and I Saw the Devil, which is one of my favorite movies of all time and is absolutely on the list. Thank God someone suggested it as a subscribe star request. I fucking love you for that. But Kim Ji-woon's general remake is weird. It's not a bad movie, the action is satisfying and he nails a lot of the iconic scenes of the anime down pat, but it's not Jinro. I mean, it's literally not Jinro. Sure, it's a basic retelling of the anime movie's plot, everything from the scene in the sewers, to meeting the love interest girl, the inner conflict brewing inside the protagonist and whether or not he wants to dedicate to a life with her or with the unit, you get the idea. The problem is that the alternate history was such an important part of the story in the original. The entire conflict with a special armed garrison revolves around their reputation falling into disfavor now that Germany has left Japan. The whole brute force boot on the neck style tactics that the Kerberos unit represents simply won't work anymore, and only gives the sect more fuel for their propaganda machine. Public security wants the unit disbanded or somehow fused into the larger self-defense force, while the garrison want to remain independent and free to act how they want. Without that history, that context, it can sort of feel like you're taking the imagery without any of what made it special to begin with. The reason the Kerberos unit look like techno-Nazis is because they are literally based off the German military. The culture in the anime is a fusion of both 1960s Japan and Nazi Germany, with cops using Mauser pistols, uh, STG-44 rifles, a Panzerfaust rocket launcher, and of course the iconic modified MG-42. Hell, Fuse himself owns a Walter PPK 
which is fucking based, my dude. Not only that, but a lot of the uniforms people wear are a lot closer to how the Nazi uniforms looked, and on top of that, everyone drives German cars. The entire appeal of General was you were seeing a very grounded take on what would happen if German culture completely overtook Japan. You have an entire generation that grew up with that. Instead of having a very obvious people who are traditionally Japanese versus people who are traditionally German, there's an obvious mixture between the two. They've embraced it. There was a very specific reason all this stuff was used, because in this world, they would be what's available. Japan is dominated by Germany, so German weaponry would be more common than anything America or Japan itself would create. Now, to Ilang's credit, it doesn't try to completely recreate these scenes without consideration to the new timeline. Characters mainly use stuff like AK-47s and more modern weaponry. Stuff like Glock pistols, MP5 submachine guns, Uzis... It's a near future, so it's reflecting a more modern culture. Hell, everyone drives pretty modern, basic cars. But the weird thing is, the Kerberos unit is pretty much the exact same. They even still use MG42s. Now granted, it's because they're fucking cool. I mean, let's be honest here, if they wanted to be accurate to modern day, they would probably carry like M240s, which are basically the modern variant. Actually, it's more of a modern recreation of the M60, which was the American answer to the MG42, but that's all just nitpicking. The big thing is, uh, why would your guys be styled off of, you know, World War II style Nazi Germany attire if the entire point is it's in modern day and Germany lost World War II. You kinda... Kinda didn't think about that part very well, did you? Now the obvious answer would be because it looks cool and it's that thing from the anime you're adapting, but that kinda goes to show you don't have that level of detail the original had. Sure, the exosuits that all the Kerberos unit guys have is absolute rule of cool shit, but everything about the world and the setting help make it feel authentic, like this is a natural thing these people live with. Now the armor in the movie looks fucking cool, but nothing about the context or the setting it built make it feel like an actual part of this world that makes sense. Hell, the fact that they establish that the reason they wear the armor is for anonymity's sake and not the fact that it looks intimidating as all hell? I mean, right there, you made the Wolf Brigade feel less threatening. Now, instead of them just being a fucking gullum monster that walks into a room and kills everything in sight, it's like they're afraid of being identified. Even though in the original manga and the anime, they gave no hints whatsoever that the Special Armed Garrison was not a publicly known unit. Now, I know at this point I'm just kind of bitching about nitpicks and what I personally think is wrong with it, because, yeah, a lot of the decisions it makes, since it does rely on a lot of rule of cool, there's nothing really wrong with that, but it kind of goes to show the conflict Ilang has with itself. Jinro has such an iconic look and feel to it. It's a very unique film, especially with the subject matter it's handling. It's not trying to be Man at the High Castle, or Wolfenstein. The fact Nazi Germany won World War II is actually a pretty small element. Hell, Hitler was straight up murdered by his own men. Germany didn't conquer the world, they slunk back out of Japan before the movie even begins. It's such a grounded, fleshed out world that feels very plausible, even with all the fairy tale allegories and melodrama. Plus, there is a lot more action in Elang than Jinro. A lot more guys getting kicked in the chest and falling through breakaway glass. The best way to show the conflict is to talk about two major scenes from both movies. Spoiler warning for both Jinro and Elang, but I really want to talk about this. I'll go ahead and recommend both films but I want to show exactly why a general purist would get pissed off the Korean version. So the first example is the museum scene. For context, a major reveal in the story is that K is actually a sect terrorist who was picked up by public security and forced to become a rat for their organization. The plan was to get close to Fuse and stage a handoff where he would be caught holding a bomb. Public security would then use this as evidence that the special armed garrison is compromised and must be purged. Fuse subverts the plan by infiltrating the museum him and Kay agreed to meet at, and fighting off the public security agents waiting for him, successfully running off with Kay and shifting the film into the third act. In the anime, it's a slow, quiet process as Fuse outsmarts the agents, knocking out each man one by one and causing distractions that let him get closer to Kay with each step. There's a lot of thought that goes into this plan, and it shows that Fuse, despite his emotional conflict, is still a highly trained soldier that is not fucking stupid. In Elang, it's relatively the same, except the action is a lot less subtle. Because there is no end to life, except for when you die. 
It's a full-blown martial arts shootout segment, leading to a massive car chase as the protagonist and the girl get the fuck out of Dodge. All that quiet tension and careful planning is thrown out the window. Now, the action is fun. Kim Ji-Woon is really good at creating intense action sequences, but... Well, you don't really want to have a scene like this in a general story. All that subtlety is just gone, which is honestly the best way to describe Elang. It's general without any of the subtlety, and you especially see it with the next example, the ending. So, to spoil the ending of Jinro, Kay dies. She is actually killed by Fuse as the Wolf Brigade, a counterintelligence group inside of the Kerberos unit working against their enemies, want to be sure that she can never be captured by public security and turned into their asset or give up the identities of anyone involved. It's a painful scene, as Kay knows she's going to die, despite Fuse struggling to pull the trigger. Her just screaming out the final words of the Little Red Riding Hood story and hugging Fuse until you hear the gunshot. <laughs> It shows that despite Fuse's desire to find a way to be human, and how much he truly loved Kay, his position as a wolf meant he could never have the kind of life that they dreamed about. The leader of the unit, Hajime Honda, flat out refers to the soldiers and the Kerberos unit as wolves pretending to be men. They gave up their humanity years ago, so Fuse's arc was to bury what is left and dedicate down his dark and painful road. Which is actually kind of ironic, since in the manga, the Kerberos unit is completely destroyed after that failed coup attempt I talked about. It was all for nothing, Fuse. Now with the Lang, the ending is... completely different. It's set up to be the same, you get the same final shootout as the anime, where Fuse kills the public security agents trying to frame him, but that ending where he's supposed to shoot the girl... He actually refuses, instead turning against his own unit and killing them to protect her, finally regaining his humanity and running off with his love interest to start a new life. It's literally a mirror opposite to the anime. Do you want a grim, depressing political thriller? Or a fun popcorn movie with some kick-ass action sequences? Because that's the difference between Jinro and Elang. Jinro is a niche film for people who like sad stuff. Elang is a more generalized adaptation to the material that doesn't quite sink to the depths that the Japanese version does. I guess it can be compared to how fans of Starship Troopers the book and Starship Troopers the movie don't really agree with each other. They are different experiences altogether, and most fans will outright view Elang as almost a betrayal to what makes Jinro special. And they're not wrong. I still like Elang, but I don't watch it as a Jinro movie. Like, period. It has the same plot, a lot of the same visuals, but it's not the same series. View it as a Korean action movie that is heavily inspired by Jinro, but not actually Jinro. Now, if you want a more loyal live-action version, check out the Tokusatsu movies. They're cheesy and not really that good, but they're fun as hell. You want me to take it too, don't you? Maybe one day we can get a new high-budget general live-action adaptation, since it's actually one of the franchises where it could absolutely work. Hell, Elang really isn't that bad, it's just some weird stylistic and story decisions that make it hard to swallow if you're a fan of the franchise. Of course, this is a fucking monkey's paw and a half, especially considering the subject matter, so maybe it's best general kind of stays quiet for now. But that's all I can say. It's a fantastic franchise I recommend you guys check out. I fucking love the movie and the manga, and really hope you guys enjoy it as well. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys. Even if Tom Cruise was Jewish and he had ancestors in Auschwitz and you were injecting him with testosterone and gorilla steroids to make him the most alpha male possible, if Adolf Hitler locked in his attention beams on Tom Cruise and said, said Tom, you're now my top guy, there's no way to resist that. Whoa. Adolf Hitler needs me? Okay, I'll do it. I'm going to bat for you, Hitler. I got your back, Hitler. Okay? And I say that with the most respect. I'm finding this very upsetting, to be honest. <laughs>
Hey, loser, do you want a shirt? Do you want a t-shirt? I have shirts now. Look in, look in the description for a link to a t-shirt you can buy. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll kill your family. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll poison your dog. If you don't buy the t-shirt, you're going to be the only person in town that does not have a t-shirt. Everyone's going to look at you funny. There's going to be social consequences to not having one of these t-shirts. I'm now making express threats of violence against you if you do not buy my t-shirt. I will call the police, tell them how they're not, you know, you're not buying my shirt. They're going to plant crack in your house, and they're going to arrest you and then beat you up in a jail cell. Buy my shirt.